misinterprets his waste, Mary's extravagant act of anointing Jesus' feet with costly perfume. Jesus recognizes that her lavish gift is both an expression of love and an anticipation of his burial. A reading from John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There he gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to, used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. At times like this in our lives, we struggle to know what to do exactly. We struggle for words. We struggle to be able to eat and sleep. We struggle sometimes even to be able to breathe properly. Last week, I had a sermon prepared for today. I was more than a week ahead of time. And that sermon, I tossed out on Friday. What happened on Thursday night to Mark Venter was important enough to supersede much of what I'd planned to say before this tragedy struck. This is not going to be a funeral sermon today. There will be a chance to remember Mark later this week. Today is a chance for us to come together as a church family to struggle together with this almost unbelievable heartache for the Venter family and for this church as well. When events like this occur, we are forced to wrestle with darkness on a level that we mostly try desperately to avoid. And when I say darkness, I don't mean anyone, including Mark, has done anything wrong here. By darkness, I mean the world as it is, imperfect, with pain and misfortune. As long as we are on this earth, as long as we are mortal. We may wonder why, and we may struggle up to, to come up with an explanation of Mark's death, but mostly there is no explanation beyond this. Each of us are broken, and we live in a broken world. Even our best guesses as to why bad things happen are only guesses, and as long as we are in this world, we grope blindly for the truth. But I know this and firmly believe that Mark must have been sick, depressed to a greater extent than we ever realized. With enough pressure, one can understand how a person can break, and today there's much more understanding of how depression changes the brain. We here today can beat ourselves up by thinking we could have, should have, done something more before Mark's death. And in a few cases, it might be true. But mostly, we clutch at what-if straws for solutions in a situation beyond our control and beyond Mark's. I'm certain that Mark's pain was so great that he could only think of a way to end it, to make it better somehow. God understands that even better than we do. But God's grace is sufficient for all our lives, including this week, for us and for Mark. Our Gospel lesson today 
speaks of the gift of Mary. And Mary was likewise struggling with a situation that she could not change, one that almost tore her in two. Jesus was not far from his death. This was the Mary of Mary and Martha, who were the subjects of our last Lenten playlet this Wednesday. This was the Mary whose brother Lazarus was raised from the dead after several days in the tomb. Jesus was her teacher. Jesus was her friend. For the life of her brother, she owed Jesus more than it was possible for her to repay. What joy Mary had because of Jesus. But then things changed. Jesus was heading for a confrontation with the Jewish High Council in Jerusalem. And that spelled trouble with a capital T. In the situation Jesus was in, she knew his death was inevitable. So she sought somehow to ease his pain and her own pain in the only way that she knew how to. Her gift acknowledged graphically that she understood what Jesus was facing and the gift was lavish and extravagant. Mary buys a jar of nard, washes the feet of Jesus, and anoints his feet with perfume. Nard was special perfume. It was often used to anoint dead bodies, and it had a lovely musky smell. Mary's nard was worth a year's wages for the ordinary worker, about $35,000 in today's money. That's quite a gift. Why did she do it? When Mary poured nard on the feet of Jesus, it was a symbolic anointing. She was anointing him for his death. Though it seems a bit strange to us in this place and time, back then it was seen as a lovely gesture of devotion for someone who is still alive. She did this because Mary had been transformed by her encounters with Jesus. She became selfless and extravagant with her time and her money. When we get close to Christ, we are affected in the same way. When we're close to Christ, we want to devote ourselves to him. When we're close to Christ, we want to devote ourselves to others too, to the children Christ loves. When we know Christ well and love him, reckless extravagance in serving him doesn't seem reckless at all. Instead, such generosity seems normal to us, and our giving is pure joy. Never is that truer than when a tragedy hits. This week, I have seen the community at its best. Selfless giving to Lori, his wife of many years, the rest of Mark's family, and Mark's friends. I know that our support for Lori and others closest to Mark will continue in the weeks to come. Reckless giving of our time and talent, like Mary, shows our love for Christ and our love for other people, especially those burdened mightily with the pain of this world. Nothing could change the tragedy that Mary saw unfolding for Jesus and for her. Nothing can stop the ongoing distress that has unfolded for this community, unfolding for this church and for the Venter family. Deep pain, deep grief. Moving forward with our leader, a co-worker, and a friend. We can do nothing to change what has happened. What we can do is to continue doing what we have been doing. To give extravagantly, to love extravagantly, to draw closer to God and draw closer to each other. In this way, we show, as Mary showed, that love is great in any circumstance, but especially in circumstances like ours. Love is stronger than death. 
Isn't that what Jesus came to show us by his life, by his death, by his resurrection? Isn't that the core of what we Christians believe? And though some might wonder, briefly, whether this week might open up old wounds of conflict, I believe the opposite is true with my whole heart. This week has brought us closer together. Will bring us closer still. Our love has brought much good to the Marks family and friends. Because we love God, because we love each other and Mark and Lori, we believe that somehow, some way, God can bring even more good out of this tribulation. How? At this moment of anguish and grief, grief, we can scarcely imagine. But our love for each other and God's love for us will make it so. Amen.